Welcome to the e-commerce podcast with me, your host, Matt Edmondson. The e-commerce podcast is all about helping you deliver e-commerce wow. And to help us do just that, I am chatting with today's very special guest, Valon Jaffa from Bahamics about how AI and consumer behavior can reduce uh, shopping cart abandonment. Yes, we are getting into all of that good stuff. AI, shopping cart abandonment, what is not to like? But before Valon and I jump into that, let me suggest a few other e-commerce podcast episodes that I think you will enjoy listening to. Check out why you should be using AI in your e-commerce business with Shanif. That was a great conversation uh, with him. And about how AI is changing shopping product recommendations specifically with Oliver Edholm who was just he blew my mind uh, with that conversation so do check those out you can find these and our entire archive of episodes on our website for free ecommercepodcast.net on our website yes you can you can also sign up for our newsletter and each week we will email you these links along with the notes and the links from today's conversation with Valen directly to your inbox, totally free. It's all amazing. Now this episode is brought to you by the e-commerce cohort, which helps you deliver e-commerce wow to your customers. Yes, it does Valen, I'm sure you've come across a whole bunch of folks stuck with their e-commerce websites, or they've just got siloed into working into just one or two areas of their business and miss the big picture. Well, enter e-commerce cohort to solve this problem. It's a lightweight membership group with guided monthly sprints that cycle through all the key areas of e-commerce, the sole purpose of which is to provide you with clear, actionable jobs to be done so you will know what to work on uh, and get the support you need to get it done. So whether you're just starting out in e-commerce or if like me, you are a well-established e-commercer, I will definitely encourage you to check it out. Head over to www.ecommercecohort.com for more information, or you can email me directly, matt at ecommercepodcast.net with any questions, and I'll try my level best to answer them. But head over to ecommercecohort.com. Honestly, you're gonna want to check it out. So. Valon is a top bloke. Yes, he is. He has previously worked as an AI scientist at Google and other research institutes developing sophisticated AI techniques and algorithms. Uh, Valon is always looking for innovative methods to use artificial intelligence to improve the online shopping experience at Bahamics. Valon, it is great to have you on the show, zooming in all the way from New York. Uh, Thanks for being with us. Great to have you. Hey, Matt. Um, thanks for having me. Oh, no. Brilliant. 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 So, Valon, you have an impressive resume, uh, or CV, as we like to say here in the UK. Uh, an AI scientist. I, I, that would make a really interesting business card. Do you know what I mean? Where you've got your name. I'm an AI scientist. And the conversations that that would create at dinner parties. Um, so, you've obviously done some interesting stuff. You find yourself now at Bahamics. So, what is Bahamics? What does it do? Yeah, I, I, I saw a Behemix, uh, or I found a Behemix um, right after I left Google as a way to uh, apply AI in e-commerce. So what I saw is that um, AI is widely applied in other industries like anonymous driving, healthcare, and finance, uh, but not a lot in e-commerce. And I and I expected that AI could make a huge impact in e-commerce too. So I saw a Behemix as a way to apply AI in e-commerce to reduce shopping cart abandonments. You know, like mm-hmm. shopping cart abandonments, it's a, it's a big deal. Um, and it's like 70% of cards are abandoned. Um, and it, there is no like feedback or, or clear facts or statistics. Why do we have shopping cart abandonments? So mm-hmm. this was as a, as a challenge for me. And that's why I started being aiming to understand why do we have shopping car abandonments? How can we prevent shopping car abandonments? Not just like recover them through emails and all these retargetings and everything that you usually do, but also be able to understand before they happen or predict before a car yeah. is, is abandoned. So you want to predict shopping car abandonment before it happens, um, which is 
if I can put it bluntly, sounds almost a little bit like witchcraft, right? It's that kind of, uh, it's this sort of, it's this black hole uh, of stuff where I think people like me just sort of get lost in our thinking a little bit. But AI has made some interesting advancements. But before we get into that, uh, Valon, let's just, for those that are new to e-commerce, what are cart abandonments? Um, what do you mean when you say cart abandonments? There's 7% there's cart abandonment. Yeah, the, there is a there is a kind of like a, a definition uh, of the car abandonment, a simple one, which is like when a user visits your shop and they they add a product to the car and then they leave without buying that product. So that's usually it's called car abandonment, and because of that, you have like seventy percent of users they abandon their cards. Mm -hmm. So we're talking here about like seventy percent of users who added something to the car. You know, and not seventy percent of your whole traffic, right? Because there are a lot of users who just come because they're just like, yeah, just want to kill some time and just like enjoy themselves, like just looking at products and everything. You know, like everyone, all of us, pretty much, we do that. Uh, but car abandonment is like this group of consumers or, or users who add something to the car and then they don't end up buying that, but they just mm. leave. So that's the car abandonment. So people have added stuff to their shopping cart, but they've just not purchased. And this is um, this is a big problem, isn't it? I, I, I say it's, big. it's one of these things that I've heard talked about off and on for a long time now. You know, it's it's one of the sort of the key areas that people like to focus on. It's like, what is stopping the people once they've added it to cart? What stops them paying me money? And I want to understand that process. So why why is this? Um, and, and, and the other thing that I've noticed, and Valen, correct me if I'm wrong here, is the percentage of cart abandonment seems to be going up. It doesn't seem to be generally falling. It seems to be, a, it, it's becoming more and more common. Have I, is that a fair reflection or, or, or have I got that entirely the wrong way around? It is, it is a, it is a, it is a statistic. It is a trend. Uh, so car abandonments are going up and connected to that also product returns because these two concepts are like tightly related to each other. Um, so these are like, these are like statistics uh, or KPIs that are unfortunately like going up um, because of a lot of issues, a lot of reasons out there mm. that we are gonna explore them during this podcast. Um, but yeah, that's, that's the reality. It's interesting actually that you've linked their uh, product cart abandonment and returns. Uh, something that I, I want to come back to. Um, so I've, I've jotted it down. Uh, whenever I look down, I'm making notes, by the way. I'm not checking my email. <laughs> Just being clear. There we go. Very good, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Checking Very the good. football scores or playing Sudoku. Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> So what are, what are some of the main reasons that you have found uh, for cart abandonment? Why do, why do we still partake in this? And let me be frank, right? I, I catch myself doing it, uh, adding stuff to cart and then not buying. Why do, what are some of the reasons we do it? Uh, so they're like uh, external and internal factors. Uh, and we're talking about like the SOAR, external factors regarding the SOAR and internal factors. At Behemix, we, we mainly focus ourselves on the internal factors because these mm -hmm. are like factors that we can actually impact and we can improve and um, prevent car abandonments. And these factors usually account for the majority of the reasons. So if we're talking about some of the main reasons, there are like, we group them into two categories, like behavioral mm -hmm. issues or behavioral reasons and uh, technical issues, technical issues within your shop, right? Yeah. Um, so behavioral issues are simple put like users as we as humans, we have hard time making decisions when we have a lot of options to choose from. Imagine, okay. for example, for you or for me or for anyone else who had a lot of options to go to good universities, you know, or got a lot of offers. Mm -hmm. It was a really hard decision to make, you know, but when you have only two offers, it's easier to make a decision. It's the same story everywhere, right? If you want to buy a car or jeans or t-shirts or whatever you want to buy, the more options you have to choose from, the harder it is to make a decision. Mm. And going back to the shops, usually within a shop for a t-shirt, you have like 20 different t-shirts within a page, you know, which look pretty similar mm -hmm. and you only want to buy one t-shirt. So you're going to be like, okay, which one should I pick here? 
because there are a lot of them. Why is yeah. it different from this? Why is the price changing? I mean, this looks a bit better, but the price is higher or the price is lower, you know, all these mm -hmm. different confusion points. So what happens here is that what usually users do is that they shortlist some of these t-shirts. Let's say out of 20, they pick like two or three, they add them to the car. But here's the catch. Most of the brands, most of the people think that the user has the intention to buy these products just because they added these three t-shirts to the car, which is not true. Mm -hmm. Because users actually, they think the car as a wish list. You know the wish list yeah. that you usually have yeah. that you don't usually use and most of the users they don't use. You know why they don't use it? Because the car itself, it's actually a wish list. It's yeah. a short list for the users. So when a user adds three t-shirts to the, to the car, they're not adding because they want to buy all of them. They, they are adding because then they have a short list out of which they can make an easier decision. Mm -hmm. And then when they go to the car, they have three different t-shirts and then they can think about it. And here's where returns are related because if the user cannot make a decision to pick one t-shirt out of these three different t-shirts, they will say, okay, maybe I can pick two and then buy them and then make the decision at home. Mm -hmm. So are you following me here? How the yeah, users yeah. actually push the decision-making as much as possible into the future. Mm -hmm. First, they say, okay, let me just, I'm gonna make the decision when I go to the car and then no, maybe I'm gonna make the decision when I have the products at home. This is a very human nature. We like to push the decision making. We like to procrastinate. We like mm -hmm. to push the decision making as much as possible in the future. We like to push the hard decisions as much as possible into the future. You know, that's the same pattern that happens here in the SOAR. So that's kind of like related to the behavioral part. We have a lot of options to choose from. It's called also paradox of choice. You have so many options to choose from. You just, you get suffocated from the decision making process. Yeah. This is the behavioral um... part. I've heard about the paradox of choice. Uh, I'm trying desperately to rack my brains of the book that I came across it in, where they talked about um, the famous jam experiment, where in a supermarket, they put six jams in a, so do you know the one I'm talking about? They put six jams in a supermarket and they monitored sales. So you could go and you could try them, right? They put six flavors out, you could try them and then they monitored sales. And then they put, I think it was something like 36 different flavors out and monitored sales after that. The idea being that the more choice you have, the more likely you are to find something that you want. Therefore, sales should increase. The paradox of choice was actually the more options you gave to consumers, the more they didn't buy, the more they put off, like you say, making yeah. that decision with jam. And I thought it was a fascinating experiment and so what you're saying here actually on your e-commerce website a lot of car abandonment is down to this paradox of choice you've got a lot of options um and what that does is and i think you're right you know we've all got what's that phrase decision fatigue <laughs> yeah. you know what i mean we're we're trying not to, very hard not to make any more decisions and so we just keep putting yeah. them off and putting them off and putting them off and of course by yeah. not making a decision you make a decision uh, and i'm laughing because i i purchased um, two coats off a website recently uh, and I pu purchased two because I wasn't sure which one I wanted and I thought I'll get one and I'll return the, the one that I don't want but I need to see it in person a little bit and I wasn't quite sure on the sizing and the fit and all that sort of stuff so um, I, everything that you have just said Val I, I am guilty of right so <laughs> everyone so is guilty yeah so it's 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 a human nature I mean we're like I mean, decisions we make and the way we make decisions in, in the real world, outside the online shop, it's the same process in the online shop, right? So it just, we just get suffocated and it's hard to make a decision, so. Mm. So we've got the paradox of choice. Um, we push decisions to the future. What else sort of affects cart abandonment? Is, is that the key thing or are there other things that we need to think about? You said behavioral and technical. Yeah, so regarding the behavioral part, regarding the behavioral part, everything is, is I mean, there are different layers uh, of, of issues that can happen, but everything is tightly related to this having a hard time making a decision, being unsure about making a decision or making the wrong decision, you know, that can actually yeah. lead to a product return, you know? Mm -hmm. So all of this is it's about like making a decision and this relates to the behavioral part. But then the second category of reasons why we have carbon are technical issues. Mm -hmm. You know, like 
uh, you have a bug or you, you have an issue with the payment or you have this or you have that, you know? So the, the thing here is that there are so many tools out there that can actually track all these things for you, you know? The issue though is that a resource, technical resources are scars uh, mm -hmm. for online shops. Not only for online shops in general, but especially for online shops, right? So uh, you won't be able to fix the issues right away. You won't, you won't be able to understand, okay, why do I have, you know, like the, how, how big of the problem this is, like this technical issue. And the most important thing is that you, you need to actually prioritize these issues. You need to understand, okay, um, how big of an issue this technical bug is so that mm -hmm. I can go and fix it. For example, there are bugs and issues that, or errors that can happen on the payment page and they only happen like 10 times a day, you know, but these 10 bugs can actually cause you a lot of revenue loss yeah, compared yeah. to some other issues that happen, I don't know, like on the product detail page that that appear like a thousand times a day, but they don't cause you as much issues, you know? Mm -hmm. so. There are so many breaking points within the shop that can happen. And it's really important to understand, okay, how are these issues tied to car abandonments? Because here's the thing, if I add a product to the car and I go and want to make the purchase and I have issues with a payment and you as a shop owner, you didn't recognize that I had an issue with a payment and I abandoned the other car because of that, you can send me whatever email you want, Matt, with a coupon or something. <laughs> I'm not gonna come and buy mm. because it's not because usually like coupons are the way to recover car abandonments, you know, with emails, and you usually get a coupon when you abandon a car. But I'm not gonna come and buy on your shop because I had a technical issue. I couldn't pay, you know. So instead yeah. of sending me a coupon with an email, why don't you just contact me and provide me help? to yeah. actually make the payment. So what I want to summarize here is that there is no like overview of what's going on and how are these issues related to car abandonments because everything is pretty much related, like the, the latency, uh, like the page or the product image doesn't load. This is this can cause a huge issue, you know, maybe it's like, oh, maybe it's just the products are loading, but yeah, this is in interconnected with the user experience and everything, you know? Mm. So yeah, bottom line, you have behavioral issues or reasons and technical issues that actually lead to car abandonments. Mm. So actually I'm listening to you talk, Valen, and I'm going in my head, I'm thinking, I, I get things like the paradox of choice. I understand that I get things like, if I don't clearly tell you what my shipping rates are and you get to a page and it suddenly surprises you that they're 400 bucks you're going to go well no i i get the logic of that and i get the logic of what you're talking about but the more you're talking the bigger and bigger it the the web sort of seems to go if that makes sense sure and so there's card abandonments are a big issue for e-commerce owners and the, the the reasons for card abandonments can be behavioral they can be technical they can be obvious they can be really unobvious and there's there's a there's a there's a, a lot going on here that's going to require a little bit of attention, which is where I'm assuming, uh, Valen, if I can sort of preempt the conversation a little bit, um, I'm assuming this is where AI actually can actually make a really big impact, right? If you could apply AI somehow in this to be your uh, twenty four seven eyes and understand what's going on and reasonings, is that is that is that right? Yeah, so that's that's actually the, the contribution of AI here in this space because uh, AI not only predicts if the consumer is going to abandon the car, something that is common, something that is general knowledge, but we have actually also pushed it a bit further by also building an AI that can explain to us why is this user going to abandon the car, yeah. the why, the reason. So imagine you, Matt, come to my shop and we predict you're going to ban the car, but then I'm also going to understand why you're going to ban the car, you know, like this specific reasons before you even do it, mm -hmm. you know, and, and then through this process, I can actually uh, intervene while you're still on site and help you and support you or whatever you need. If, if you're going to ban the car because of the technical issue, then I can assist you. It's like, Hey, we see that you have, or you're having a hard time with payment or you have, you didn't see this image loaded or something. Can we help you somehow, you know? 
or if we see that you you have a hard time making decisions because of this paradox of choice or you have so many options or you're not finding the right size and we can predict that you're going to ban it because of these issues then we can actually reach out to you while again you're still on site and try to provide support according to the reason why you're going to ban the car right mm. so it's all about it's all about like uh, the, the biggest issue is that when you bring a consumer or a user to your shop, you already paid a lot of money, mm -hmm. you know? So if you leave this consumer to leave your store and try to bring them back to emails and retarget, this is going to cost you additional money. You know, the solution here is like, you need to react while this user is on site mm -hmm. and be able to intervene right away and prevent things before they happen. You know, like, we, we know this concept. If you prevent something, it's more cost effective than trying to recover or or repair or something, you know, like it's with cars, it's even with health, you know, mm. you can predict diseases and prevent them and you can treat them, you know, this will be more efficient, more successful and more cost effective mm. than just leaving it go big. So that's the same concept that we're actually applying here, um, predict prevent and try to keep the user on site as much as we can and not like say oh i have i can send emails mm -hmm. and bring the consumer back because it's going to cost you additional money mm -hmm. especially these days uh, the biggest issue these days is that the, the cost that the cost of ads have gone so up that uh, it's very costly to actually bring or it's it costs you a lot of money to bring consumers or additional traffic to your store until a year or two years ago the only way to, to grow was to bring more traffic to your mm -hmm. store because it, it was cheap. You could just get more traffic, you're good to go. Now, even if you have the money, it's going to cost you so much money to actually just yeah. bring additional traffic. So you have to go back to your side and see, okay, what else can I improve here so mm -hmm. that the traffic that I have right now, I can actually increase my profit and margins, but also increase customer satisfaction because it's really important. Mm -hmm. So how... I. It's. Um, I mean, it sounds wonderful, uh, Alan. You know the the, the yeah. sort of the, the key problems and uh, that you have. So, how does AI? If I go back to the sort of list that you gave earlier on, so let's look at the paradox of choice. How does AI help a consumer deal with this paradox of choice? How does that? How does? Well, have you have you figured that out, right? Because that sounds. That sounds like an easy thing to roll off the tongue, right? Yeah. I can just say that. But actually, how do, I'm really curious. How does that, how does it do it? Yeah, so uh, we can take a very simple example to maybe explain the paradox of choice that it's more simplistic for the audience. So one of the reasons why consumers abandon the cards is because um, they just add too many products to the card, mm. which is which is maybe um, maybe uh, a misconception because uh, people or brands. Uh, think that when consumers add products to the car, they have a higher chance of buying. Yes mm -hmm. and no, because after a specific number of products in the car, your probability of buying goes down mm -hmm. because you're not going to buy 20 products or 15 products, you know, mm -hmm. so you're just shortlisting them. So um, this is the case when consumers abandon the car and what our AI, for example, does here is that for every product you add to the car, we get a probability score um, of what is your probability of buying, you mm -hmm. know? And if we see that, okay, your probability of buying is increasing with more products and that suddenly starts to decrease, then we know that maybe it's the right time for you to, to remind to you, Matt, that maybe you can have a look on your car because uh, it seems that you're already with the car. It's like a gentle reminder, you mm -hmm. know? This kind of like, you know, when you go to the shop, to a physical store and you have a shop assistant helping you with advices and maybe try this or maybe try that or maybe this would look good or this or that right so this is the touch and the feel that you don't have right now on online shopping experience it's mm -hmm. just like one-way interaction you have to go it's self-service pretty much you have to go and find the right products and everything and what happens here is that most of the consumers they just lose themselves they just like by trying to find more product and then spending more time you know instead of like instead of focus on these three four products that they already added to the car mm. and see if they can make a decision here so what our ai does is that uh or ai predicts if the consumer is going to add too many products to the car mm. and then they're going to ban the car 
And before they do that, we just provide a gentle reminder to the consumer on site, you know, like mm -hmm. a small note or something. Hey, Matt, it seems that your car, maybe it's rabbit or something. Why don't you have a look on it? Because we know if you mm -hmm. continue doing that process, you're just going to add too many products and it's going to be harder for you to make a decision. And you're just mm -hmm. like, end up leaving and not buying at all. So that's, for example, one case, but there are a lot of reasons yeah. out there. That's really clever. I mean, that it, it's interesting that, um, I mean, let, forget all the, the, the AI, just the psychology of saying, actually, yes. no, now's the ideal time for you to check out, but and we're going to help you remember to do that because uh, we want you in the shop, but not too long. I'm kind of reminded of the supermarkets, you know, they, um, I don't know if they still do it, but years ago, they uh, they used to play music at different speeds, depending on how long they wanted you in the shop, right? So if they wanted you in the shop and out because it was busy, they would pay, play faster paced music. And if they wanted you to hang around the shop for a while and just browse and add a few more products to your basket, they would play slower, calmer music. Just chill out, just take your time. Um, and it's kind of what you're describing reminds me of that, Valen, you know, that actually what you're doing is you're going, no, the optimal time for this person buying these types of products is like, I need them out of the store within four minutes and five seconds, which kind of goes against the logic, which says, actually, we want them to hang around in the site. We want them to read stuff. We want them to get sucked in and drawn in. Um, actually, you're going, well, that's not always the case. And you're using this sort of AI magic to figure that out, right? Exactly. So the magic here is that not not every single customer is the same. So there is no average consumer. The average consumer is not is not real. It's idealistic, you know, so it doesn't exist. So mm -hmm. every single consumer has their own time frame of how much time they want to spend or they're going to spend. And we can actually predict that, you know. So if we predict the consumer is going to spend four minutes, then you can just waste your time trying to have them more on your store right or longer in your store which means that which means that if you see that the consumer is ready to buy if you predict that and they don't have enough time then the best possible way here is like remind them to go to the car and see if they are willing to buy any of these products instead of like trying to confuse them with like coupons and like showing a pop-up asking for their emails and mm. promotions and this and that you know like i don't really have a lot of time i mean let's say i'm on the subway going to my to my work and i see an ad and i click a product and you know like on the subway you don't have a lot of time you have like three four minutes time spent mm -hmm. and uh i add that to the car and suddenly i get like bombarded with like oh here's a promotion here's this no i, I just I, I saw an ad I added this to the car, I want to finalize this purchase. So why don't you help me focus on this instead of you trying to upsell and then lose me completely? Yeah, so. I, I like I like the message that you're preaching, Valen. I really do. I think it's so wise. I, I wrote down this phrase you used earlier. And when you said that when you were talking about how there were too many options, you called them confusion points. I don't know if that's a deliberate phrase you use. Um, uh, but I thought it was a really interesting phrase that actually what we're doing is we're on e-commerce at the moment, we're creating a lot of confusion points and some of them you've hit upon, like, give me your email address, do this, do that, do the other. And it's like, I just want to get this product and go, dude, is, is, is yeah. what I want. Right. So what sort of things then does AI look at? So you talk about predicting the behavior and so ha what sort of, does it look at everything like what whether you're on mobile uh you know whereabouts in the world you are what time of day it is yeah what sort of things would ai look at and sort of start to take into consideration start to calculate uh, behavior yeah so uh, they're almost like behavior based data like click stream data we don't in our case we don't use personal data because we don't uh you know we're not gonna send emails we don't we don't need to know what the user did like three months ago or something. It's pretty much completely behavioral data, like um, which ad did you click when you came to the store or which mob, which device are you using, which type of device? And then where did you land on the shop? Did you land on the product detail page or on the home page? Which products did you click? The sequence of the products clicked and all these different variables. So we use like around like 200, 250 different variables to actually be able to mm -hmm. um, to get a better understanding of the consumer. And with every click the consumer does, 
we actually uh, predict the behavior and we measure the probability score of buying, you know, because this is the most important thing here. So yeah. what happens here is that the confusion point that you mentioned, no, this is something that I'm, I actually mentioned and I attended it because um, we have seen that we have seen a lot of cases when the consumer was ready to buy, high probability of buying, and then the brand showed the pop up asking for an email and they just lost the consumer. The, the, probability of buying it dropped to like 50% or something and they just mm. left or or there's also another com big confusion point which is related to upselling upselling is great you know upselling is something that can actually make you money um, increase the average or values and everything but after a specific point in time when the consumer has added enough products to the car don't try to upsell too much because you can lose a consumer mm -hmm. if I go to the car and then I have three products that I want to buy and one of them is a t-shirt and then I'm ready to buy high probability of buying. And then you provide a recommendation on the bottom saying like, Hey, this, these are also some other t-shirts. So this is a confusion point because maybe now I like one of the other t-shirts, which are being recommended to me. So now I'm going to change my mind. It's like, damn, which one should I pick? Should I go mm. with the one that I was ready to buy or not with this one that I didn't see before? And then what happens, like maybe you add this new t-shirt and then you're just like, no, I don't know which decision to make. And then like two options you're gonna do here. Um, the first is that you're gonna leave the store without buying or you're gonna buy both t-shirts and then return one of them, mm. which is not good. Mm. Returns are not good. You should not do trade-offs between returns because uh, one, percentage increase or percentage point increase in return is not a one percentage decrease in revenue it's four mm -hmm. or five because mm -hmm. you have all the costs associated to returns yeah so yeah. upselling is a confusion point these pop-ups like asking for emails and everything are a confusion point like uh users are different and you have to be able to actually target them better if the user is willing to buy why are you asking for an email you're going to get the email mm -hmm. In a way, yes, yeah. you know, yeah, yeah. So that's clever. It's interesting because what you're doing with AI, or what I'm understanding, Val, and let me put it that way <laughs> rather than tell you what you're doing, here's what I understand. Um, what I'm understanding is you're using AI, uh, and AI is using hard, real data, right? It's using 200, 250 data points to try and predict what is going on here, and it's I'm assuming the AI is very um, specific to that store, the behaviors for that store, because it's going to be different to the store, you know, further down the road, isn't it? It's going to have a different set of behaviors attached to it. And you're using data to figure that out rather than what tends to happen is I will go to a website, someone's written a blog post, which says you must have three upsells per product to maximize average order value. Right. And so in my head, I go, I must have three products to upsell. And actually what you're using is data, which says, no, actually for your website, you should have a maximum of two based on this data. And actually the, the products which you upsell, they really matter as well. So it's it's not just the fact that you upsell, it's what you upsell. And if you upsell that, the knock on effect is this. And I sit here and I listen to the T-shirt example and I go, well, from a logical point of view, everything that you have just said makes sense. But I would never have thought about that um, in a million years, which is why I guess when I go to the T-shirt websites, they're trying to upsell me yet another T-shirt. Um, and so I, I like the smartness of this and I like how you're using the, the data. Can I ask you a question? How much data do you need? As in, should I be plugging in um, your AI if I'm just starting out or should I be plugging in your AI if I've got more than 200 product SKUs? Should I be plugging in your AI if I've got more than 10,000 customers? I'm really curious how much data you need to start building this kind of predictive model. Uh, we do have, uh, this is actually a really, really good question. Like um, for AI is very agile in this way because we have our own pre-built models and AI systems and everything. So it's not that when we go live with your shop or when we install our AI in your shop, we're gonna start from zero. No, we mm. already have knowledge collected from different stores, from different categories, from different products. Because the most important thing here is that you said that maybe for, for your shop, two products to upsell is good, you know? Which is partially true because 
again, the thing here is that there is no average score. There is no mm-hmm. average user. The average user doesn't exist. You know, in most of the cases, mm-hmm. every user is different. And the most important thing is that, okay, let's say, for example, that you, uh, two products to upsell is good for your shop, but this can also change within seasons. Mm-hmm. For example, when you're like in winter season, you won't be able to sell to upsell to two products because the price is high. You have like jackets and, and mm-hmm. everything else, which are expensive. So if you can upsell one product in winter season, that's it's good. But for example, during summer, you can maybe you need to upsell three products. Let's say mm-hmm. if we talk about the average, mm-hmm. but again, the average is not, it, it's not a good, it's not a good way to, to measure how many products you have to upsell to, to the consumers and mm-hmm. everything else. Um, so like going back to, to the topic of like how much data, it's usually like as soon as you install BMX, um, we can actually make predictions right away within one, two hours of data. We just need to uh, reiterate and readapt everything because we already have like baseline systems capable of making predictions. Mm-hmm. And I guess uh, BMX is always learning, isn't it? It's always kind of adapting to what's going on. And that's the beautiful thing about AI. It's this constant learning machine, isn't it? Um, can I ask, you, you say you've collated all this data from websites that you've been on and obviously you've, you've seen stuff as a result of this. Um, what have been some of the most surprising things for you, as in, you've done this on the car abandonment, you've looked to the stats, you've looked to the data coming out of stores with your AI. What have, what have been some of the most surprising findings? I'm, I'm curious. Uh, I, I mean, like, the, I mean, the findings could be like, uh, interesting findings or funny findings, mm-hmm. which are findings that maybe they don't have a huge impact. It can be also findings that actually they're not that interesting, but they have a huge impact. Mm-hmm. So I can start with funny finding. One of the funniest findings that I, we, we found is that um, users these days actually they also sometimes abandon the cards on purpose because they know they'll receive mm-hmm. an email with a coupon. Yeah, and we're yeah, able yeah. to actually we were actually able to 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 see this pattern. We saw the consumer they abandon the card even if they had a high chance of buying because our AI can predict that they abandoned it on purpose. And then after a few hours. We saw them coming back and adding the coupon that they got from the email and coming back from email, you know? So this is a pattern that we actually saw because recovery emails with coupons were great in the beginning, but now actually consumers also sometimes abandon the car on purpose in hopefully to get a coupon. Yep, so this I, was, this was, this was a really, really funny finding that mm. we, we found. Uh, but the one that is interesting or that can have huge revenue uh, loss our findings were brands they know they have issues within their shop. I mean, we've been talking like about like brands that are like hundred million dollar in annual revenue or something. They know they have an issue, it's visible, and they can go and fix it. Which is which is like you have, for example, f- filtering options are not working or image uh, images are not loading or something because they they know that this is an issue that challenge here is that they don't know how big of this issue is. So this is why it kind of like led us to the thing, maybe we should tell them, hey, this image that is not being loaded is costing you 20 grand a month mm-hmm. so that maybe they can actually go and fix it. And this was this is something that is actually across most of the clients we work with and that we have seen in the industry. There are issues that are clear, they are not being fixed, issues that can be actually fixed easily. Um, and can actually make them more money and, and generate more money. And because these issues can actually lead to car balance directly. If the filtering option is not working, then this is another reason for me to leave the store. Mm-hmm. So is this, uh, before we hit the record button, we were talking about a, a new development that you guys have got called Flow, which you're excited about. Is this is this what you're talking about here? The ability to um, uh, put a financial value on inaction, for want of a better expression, uh, on your website. The stuff which is wrong and not working, it's costing you 20 grand, 30 grand, the image not loading. Yeah. Um, is that what Flow does, your new your new product? Yes, yeah, so we uh, we took the findings from the psychology part. So we're like, price is something that can have a huge impact on everyone, you know? And it's the same story also for, for brands. So if brands see that, okay, this adder is happening 200 times a day, that really, it's not really urgent, you know? 
But if they see that this error is causing them like 20 grand a day, mm. this is urgent. You know, like price is really important. And if you really want to prioritize things, you really have to kind of like be able to see and prioritize and rank them based on the revenue that these issues are causing so that you can go and fix them mm. and even escalate the issues. So that's what we kind of like did here. We, we, we applied AI again, as always, to be able to explain things that are happening within the store and help us attribute every single issue um, to a revenue loss, which means that if you fix that issue, you're gonna get that revenue loss right mm -hmm. away, pretty much. And we run the tool where actually we launch it with our existing clients and everything. And we see like astronomical values in terms of loss because of small issues. We see like 50 grand a day, which is like 15% of the whole revenue, wow. you know, like 20 grand a day because of small issues. Mm. And these issues are either like on the payment or they are like on, on product lists or images or whatever. These are mm. issues that can be fixed. But the, the thing here is not just fixing the issues because you can fix the issues and then you're going to go which is not true because the whole idea of the tool is to actually prevent these 50 grand in the future. Mm. Because whenever you push new things and you change new things to your store, you constantly add new stuff and the chances of issues appearing are high. Mm. So let me, let me give you an example. So we had, we had this client who told us that, look, we added additional payments options and uh, it actually, we lost revenue. Mm will lose in revenue. How is that possible? And then they told me that they it, it took them a month to figure out that some of the payment options were not working all the time for some devices for some of this, you know? So pretty much it backfired on them and it mm. didn't backfire because adding more payment options works or increases conversion rate or whatever. It backfired because they didn't have a solution in place to actually tell them, hey, you're losing money because of this and this mm. is a new issue. So if they would have our tool in place, our tool would be able to tell them right away, hey, look, you have a revenue loss because of this issue, and then they would be able to go and fix it. So that's kind of like the, the, wow. the direction. Mm. That's, I mean, that's incredible. That's a product in its own right. I see why it's a standalone. Yeah. I mean, that's a, that's a beautiful piece of technology. You know, it's like a constant monitor of your website. This is wrong. It's costing you this much money. Fix it. I mean, that's, yeah. that's a, for anybody that's run an e-commerce store, I'm like, that's that's a beautiful thing, right? Where do I sign up? Because I mean, that just sounds great. So you've got this technology which monitors that. You've got this AI which, you know, figures out when the best time to check out is and a few other bits and, you know, helps with the behavioral side of things. Can AI also help customers make the right choice about a product so that they don't return it? So that, you know, it's not like me going, oh, I'm not sure about this coat or this coat and then returning one. It helps me make the right choice in the first place. Can can AI be that clever? Yeah. So we uh, we apply we apply AI for like two two specific let's say goals. First is to predict if the consumer is going to ban the car mm -hmm. because um, if the user bans the car, then there won't be any returns, mm -hmm. you know, because they won't buy. It. Um, but if they are going to buy a product. And if we predict that they're going to buy and purchase the product, then we also predict and try to explain if the user is going to return that product, individual product, and why before they even buy it. So pretty much, pretty much we can actually, with 95, 6% accuracy, we can predict for every individual product if they are going to be returned in a few weeks or not, as soon as they, they are bought. Wow, that's quite a high percentage. It's a high percentage, yeah, because it really shows that there are patterns because otherwise if there are if there are no patterns you won't be able to predict it, this just shows that there are a lot of patterns out there that you can actually take into account to, pre to do these predictions but the cool part here is that we can predict if the user is going to return the product before they even buy the product just by having them on the card and then we can explain okay why is the consumer going to return this product for example one of the reasons why consumers return products is that um, they really want to have a size, a specific size of that product, um, but that size is not available right now. So what they do, they go and add um, the closest size to that, like a smaller or a, a larger size, which is not good because again, it's not the right size. And we can actually predict this. And in that case, we would actually 
try to recommend them to swap this product with a similar product that has this size available. Because again, it's so important that we prevent returns before they actually are purchased, before they actually they are returned, because that's yeah. kind of like the most important thing. Mm -hmm. But there are so many other cases, like for example, um, users they just go and add like three, four different or three, four different products of the same category or something so that they can make the decision back at home because they, they're not conscious of the whole environmental mess and the shipping costs and everything that can actually lead to that. Um, so we kind of like gently remind to them that, hey, if you add like four products and we predict that you're going to return three of them, you know, we sometimes add a gentle reminder that, hey, these products will be returned and this can cause environmental damages, you know, mm -hmm. because of CO2 and everything else that is related to that. You know, so these are some kind of like gentle reminders. Everything is gently uh, suggested, like reminded to the consumer that, hey, your decision has a consequence. You mm -hmm. know, it's not like recommending them directly, hey, you should buy this product because mm -hmm. three other product users bought this product too. You know, that's kind of like, it's kind of like too much to push it here, you know, mm -hmm. but we're trying to tackle it from like a gently psychological yeah. perspective. Yeah, I like that. It's a bit like, um, when I go to a hotel room and they put on the towels, don't they? You know, if you want us to re re wash these, put them here. Otherwise, we'll leave them alone because it's going to save the planet. Uh, and it's that sort of gentle reminder. It gives the consumer a bit yes. more choice, which seems to work very well from a psychological point of view, because you don't come across as preachy, but you do remind the consumer of what's important to them, which I think is really clever. Um, you know what, Valen, I'm aware of time, right? And I am I feel like, as I say this, to, if you're a regular to the show, I'm really sorry for the amount of times I say, I feel like I'm just scratching the surface. Uh, it's a genuine thing. Um, I, I feel like we're just getting into the conversation here. Um, question for you, right? A uh, bit, bit sort of left field question. Um, as you know, this show is sponsored by the e-commerce cohort, right? Which is just, it's like a, a mastermind group. So imagine you're in a hotel somewhere and everybody from cohort is there. You've just delivered your keynote speech. You've talked about how AI is going to change their world and rock their lives. And they're like, yeah, it's amazing. Best speech. Well done, Valen. Go, go, go. Um, and you come on, you take a bow and you take that opportunity to say thank you to various people. You know, I wouldn't be here without dot, dot, dot. I'm curious, who do you think? Is it uh, what, what people, what books, what podcasts, you know, what, what, who, who's kind of impacted your life and, and got you to where you're at? It's, uh, it's actually, at the end of the day, it's, it's more like just a uh, hands-on experience, to be honest, because mm -hmm. you, you just said, you just said there are like so, so, so many articles out there that just provide misconceptions. Mm -hmm. You know, like three products are the best one, two products are selling are the best one. I think at the end of the day, it's all about, it comes down to like just going uh, into the trenches yourself and seeing things and measuring things and doing a lot of things because I'm, I come from an, a science background mm -hmm. and I, even to this day, because we build a lot of new things uh, in terms of AI and technology within BHMIX, we read a lot of articles, we constantly see what's up there and you know what, we try to combine different things and you rarely can, um, uh, let's say, get the results that you see out there for your own uh, experiments or tests or something, you know, so everything mm -hmm. is kind of like bubbled up pretty mm -hmm. much, you know, like to have the best results, the greatest results, you know, like to provide this traction, to provide this, this buzzwords, you know, as I said, like three product selling is the best one, you know. But at the end of the day, the most important thing is the experience. You just have to go into the trenches yourself, test things yourself, measure things for yourself, and be able to um, test my things pretty much. So that's that's something that I, I think is really important. Even to this day, uh, we read a lot of stuff out there, um, but not everything is like completely true and or completely false, you know? So mm -hmm. you have to take everything with a bit of grain of salt here. Yeah. No, fair enough. Fair enough. That's very true. Uh, you have to take, you do have to get into the trenches. I like that phrase. I do like that phrase. Um, Valen, how do people reach you? How do they connect with you if they want to find out more about Behamics? If they've got questions for you about AI, what's the best way to do that? 
Um, they can definitely they can definitely uh, go to our landing page, um, bmx.com. They can get more information uh, into the bmx.com. Um, or if they, they want to reach out to me directly, they can just connect with me on, on LinkedIn. Um, and yeah, I'd love to love to talk and see what we can build and how we can actually apply AI more into e-commerce. Not just say like, yeah, AI is going to change the world, but like mm -hmm. actually applying AI in e-commerce, which is a completely different story. So, yeah, yeah, I like that. I don't want AI to change the world. I just want it to make my store better. <laughs> yeah, because you have to start somewhere. You, know? you like, do, like, yeah, you do. Change and everything. Yeah, yeah. Just, let's just start step by step, you know, like let's baby steps. Let's, <laughs> first, let's just start first, like to implement AI a yeah. bit, mm. because we cannot go to like, just kind of change the world without actually even starting. And yeah. then, yeah. No, I like that. <laughs> it's brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant. Yeah, sold the world, fix my store. Uh, that's, yeah. that, that's a good, yeah, 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 yeah. Save the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Maybe I should use that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, see it on Can the Dynamics website. If I, if, I have, if I have the copyrights for it, yeah. Yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> that's brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Yeah. Well, Valen, thank you so much uh, for joining us. Really appreciate you being with us. Genuinely great conversation. I'm super excited about your products. I'm really excited to see where they go and what kind of uh, benefits they bring to people. So do stay in touch with us and, and bring us the case to us because genuinely really, really curious. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hey, Matt, thanks a lot. Thanks for having me. Um, yeah, take care. Absolutely. Well, there you go. We will, of course, link to Valen's info in the show notes, which you can get for free along with the transcript at ecommercepodcast.net or direct to your inbox if you have signed up for our newsletter. Uh, so thank you so much for joining me. A huge thanks again to Valen uh, and a big shout out again to today's show sponsor, ecommercecohort.com. Head over to ecommercecohort.com for more information about this new type of community that you can and probably should join. Uh, be sure to follow the e-commerce podcast wherever you get your podcasts from because we have even more great conversations lined up uh, like today's with Valon talking about all kinds of stuff which is going to help you deliver e-commerce well and I don't want you to miss any of them. Oh and just in case no one has told you yet today uh, dear listener you are awesome. Yes you are. Uh, it's just a burden you've got to bear. I've got the same problem. Valen's got the same problem. We just have to bear awesomeness. Oh, well. Uh, the e-commerce podcast is produced by Orion Media. Uh, you can find our entire archive of episodes on your favorite podcast app. The team that makes this show possible is Sadaf Bain on Josh Catchpole, Estella Robin and Tim Johnson. Our theme song was written by Josh Edmondson and my good self. And as mentioned, if you'd like to read the transcript or show notes, head over to our website, ecommercepodcast.net, where as I said, you can also sign up for our weekly newsletter and get all of this good stuff directly to your inbox, totally free, which is amazing. So that's it from me. That's it from Valen. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, have a fantastic week wherever you are. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.